um, welcome to all. This is another edition of Kutch Economics Online Seminar Series. Today we are uh, fortunate to have a uh, with little bit delay for which also we apologize. Apparently there was some mix up in time. Uh, we welcome Pascal Corti of University of Victoria, Canada, who will discuss his recent research also, I think recently published in Journal of Culture Economics, jointly with Dapping Liu on some economics of movie exhibition, increasing returns and the IMAX revenue premium. Pascal, please, um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I also I just note uh, to all, please put your questions uh, in the chat. We will try to ask them during the presentation, which should last of about 45 minutes, and there will be time for questions afterwards, and the seminar is recorded and will be online. Thank you. Please, Pascal. Uh, thank you, uh, Andres. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to join you. So let me get straight into the question. So here, um, I'm going to motivate this, uh, this project with um, the following graph that plots uh, the, uh, most of the theaters uh, in China as of um, 2016. And uh, what I want to take away from that picture is that on the horizontal axis, uh, uh, for, for each theater, what we do is that we, we measure the number of auditorium, which is a number of screens that can be used to project movies, and the average number of seats per screen. So the screens may have different size, but we uh, take the average, so to give a, a representation. And you see some theaters have only one screen, so that would be the first line here. So if I... Um, uh, if I take uh, 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 my spotlight here, so you see some theater here, those one have only one screen. And, and you see these, this big uh, mass point here would be these very large, they're called palace. They are these uh, single screen, uh, very large theaters. And then if you go uh, on top here, you see some theaters have many screens. So they would be called uh, the, the megaplex, right? They would have more than, 13 or 14 screen. And so what I'm trying to motivate here is that uh, there are many, many different types of theaters. You see you have some palace, you have some megaplex. Uh, here we're going to call these the quadriplex, even though most of the mass is around here. So most of the mass has around seven and eight screens of about 140 seats each. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, variability around that. And the issue you might want to ask yourself is, does it make a difference? And, and that's, that's a question we're going to ask here. Is, 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 a, is a, a, a movie theaters like, a, like the ultimate palace, you know, like it's 400 seats. Uh, see here it's truncated, right? So we, we truncate at 300, but there are some 600 uh, single screen theaters do they can they compete with let's say uh, a megaplex right which would have like uh, 13 screens of of uh, about 140 theaters so um so to to summarize this this uh, this question uh, let me i want to get rid of them um, so I have some problem here. Uh, okay, so I need to uh, notate uh, clear, uh, clear, the clear all drawings. Thank you. So the questions to to state these questions differently is: Would a theater uh, 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 that has a thousand uh, seats uh, would it, can it earn the same if it has let's say ten auditorium? So we're gonna call them auditorium, right? Uh, which would mean the same thing as screen, would it earn the same if it has 10 auditoria of 100 seats or, or five auditoria of 200 seats? Or, or if you look at the market as a whole, you can state the question slightly differently. And, uh, and if you look at the market as a whole, we'd say uh, in a market with four theaters of 20 identical auditoria, is it the same if some theaters are large and let's say they, they, they have uh, seven auditorium and some are small, they have three, 
or if all theaters have five auditorium. So would consumers have a preference, right, uh, between the three and the seven? And, and what, what is that preference, you see? Um, and then we're also going to look at IMAX. So we started this project by thinking about IMAX. So the, what we call an IMAX theater is a theater that has an IMAX screen. Uh, this channel is a little unique where, where IMAX is kind of a premium technology that is always offered as part of a larger uh, theater complex. So some theater complex have this kind of super premium projection technology that is called IMAX. And so uh, the idea here is uh, you focus on the revenue of the regular screen. So, and, and, but, but this, this theater is as regular screen, but it also has an IMAX screen, right? So is there a positive spillover, right? I think an IMAX, does it increase the revenue of your non-IMAX screens? So that's gonna be the second question. So we're gonna have some IMAX theater and some non-IMAX theater. And, and when we're not looking at the IMAX revenue, the IMAX revenue is something separate, but the, the idea is to say, look, having an IMAX, does it have this positive spillover? Okay, so um, so the, the thought experiment you want to think about is that is the exhibition technology scale additive? So each additional, so, so if it's scale additive, it means that each additional seat and each additional auditorium bring the same incremental revenue and there are no spillover from uh, uh, no, no interaction and the same thing hold for the IMAX uh, auditorium. So the bigger question, and we, when we, we were asked by the, the by the reviewers uh, to uh, to think about a bigger question, and, and and I think the bigger question in terms of cultural economics is that uh, in some setup you have to build an infrastructure to deliver cultural content, and does the design and the characteristics of that infrastructure matter? And uh, that would hold for movie theaters, but if you think of museums, so museums have to build different aisles or different uh, space to uh, exhibit uh, art. Or if you think of a festival, a festival can build different stages. So festival in, in concert uh, are pretty popular. And uh, the issue is um, how many stages do you, do you build to, to, to uh, feature different artists? So that's the idea of, of how do you design uh, uh, infrastructure, which is a long-term investment to deliver cultural content. And uh, so in the context of movie, the, there is already a literature that, that shows that um, uh, what do people really value? So obviously, ultimately they're gonna watch a movie, but um, to make that, choice uh, of which movie they're going to be matched with, which title, movie title they're going to be matched, and maybe they prefer to go to a Megaplex where they can choose between five or 10 movies. Or Megaplex also offer them to see the same movie at different time. And uh, the, the frequency of uh, scheduling is, is uh, they, they have more options, right? So that, that could be an argument in favor of having, uh, in, in favor of the Megaplex. Uh, that's the demand side argument. And, um, but at the same time, you could think from a supply side that the, the movie owner, uh, if they have more uh, auditorium and they have more, um, they schedule more movies, they might be able to better learn about the local demand. So you see that there is a whole scheduling literature that tries to find out now it's much more fluid, the scheduling, and uh, uh, you, you, you bring new movie title and you can offer this movie title at different times of the day. And uh, there could be a spillover on the supply side too, right? If you have more screen, you learn faster about uh, how, when to retire a movie, for example. And then the final thing that I'll talk briefly later is, is, is that you can always take a given capacity and divide it in, in, in more auditorium, but then your auditorium is smaller. And uh, the smaller auditorium is gonna have a smaller screen typically, that there's uh, papers that shows that, possibly you're gonna pick a lower fixed cost investment on sound system and, and maybe you lower the quality of the experience. So, so you see, uh, the, the, it is also related to the, to, to the auditorium size, right? You could always divide a large auditorium and smaller auditoria, but you, you benefit because you offer more diversity and maybe you learn better about your demand, but, um, but you, you possibly uh, damaged the, the, the experience itself. 
So this is going to be the, the kind of the mechanism in mind when we think about this uh, hypothesis of the, uh, the, the Omen hypothesis that the scale doesn't matter or default hypothesis. So there is uh, th there is a large literature on on uh, on uh, mo on movie, right? But it has a lot to do about production, distribution, exhibition. There's a large literature on ratings of of, of, of uh, movie titles. The the literature on movie exhibition that that is our focus here. It's really about the the, uh, the production function of the movie exhibition is relatively small. Um, Davis has looked at local competition, business stealing. So the idea here is to say in the local market when uh, a new theater opens. To what extent there is uh, market expansion? To what extent there is uh, business stealing? Uh, and the people have looked also a little bit at agglomeration, looking at the location of uh, the theaters. And some people have looked at different uh, theater attributes, like sound system and um, and um, uh, you know, like some some other attributes about the seats. Some seats are more comfortable and things like that. Finally, the last literature that is relevant for us is the literature on um, scheduling. So there is, there is literature on scheduling choice that shows that scheduling matters and scheduling is, is a, a response to a, a number of, uh, a number of uh, um, so scheduling is how frequently you show a title and when do you retire a title. So, let me do uh, cover a little bit of uh, 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 a little bit of notation to follow. So we're going to define scale as uh, so we're going to have the number of auditorium and the, the seating capacity per auditorium, and then we're going to call theater design is is going to be your your theater scale and whether you have an IMAX. So that's going to be the triplet A I S. So A would be, for example, it could be five. You have five auditoria of uh, 140 seats each. So S would be 140. And I would be one if you have on top of that uh, an IMAX auditorium. So you would have A plus one auditoria, including one IMAX one. But again, we're gonna look only at the revenues from the regular auditorium. So the, the, the IMAX is, it doesn't enter the, the, the revenue measure. It enters only as an additional attribute. So, um, so we're going to assume that the, the revenue from the regular auditorium, so excluding the IMAX auditorium, is a function of uh, AIS, the, the theater design, and some uh, uh, external characteristics that we will control for. But for now, we're going to assume they are constant, right? That could be uh, lo local demand, competition, and so on and so forth. That would be our control variable. And, and so let's focus on, on the ignore the X for now, for, because it's just a theoretical uh, argument here. So the first hypothesis would be that the full design theater neutrality. It would be that basically total revenue is linear in total capacity. So it's a, total revenue is just a function of AS. You tell me how many auditoria you have, you tell me how many seats per auditoria you have. I know the total number of seats. I can predict your revenue. And that means that the elasticity of revenue is one with respect to the number of auditorium and the number of seats. A weaker version is to recognize that maybe uh, there's a scale effect, but the scale effect doesn't uh, happens only through total capacity through AS, and and it doesn't happen through the, the split of uh, total seats, total seat count between uh, whether there are many auditoria or, or few auditoria. So that, that would be the hypothesis two is a weaker design net neutrality that say that the elasticity of auditoria is equal to the elasticity of, of uh, seats. So here you see A times S is the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter how, how, you, uh, how you produce these, um, this total capacity. And uh, keep in mind here, it's only revenue. And I work only with revenue, obviously the cost side, right? The, the cost side, the dividing an a larger, Larger space in more auditoria uh, include uh, replicating more fixed cost to add this additional uh, 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 auditoria. And the, there is no IMAX spillover if basically varying, having i is equal to zero or i equal to one uh, doesn't matter. So that's going to be our main hypothesis, right? No IMAX spillover, meaning that having an IMAX doesn't influence the revenue of non IMAX uh, uh, auditorium. So we, we're going to investigate this. this so, so we're going to take a very uh, empirically, we're going to take a very 
um, agnostic view about the, the, the functional form of R because uh, the R could be nonlinear, could be uh, could depend on A and S in, 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 in particular ways. So we're going to write this function F of A and S, and we're going to try all kinds of, of, uh, of we're going to try Cobb Douglas, we're going to try piecewise Cobb Douglas, we're going to try nonlinear function. Um, and then after we're going to control for all these uh, outside uh, outside uh, control variables. And then we're also going to say that IMAX theaters may have a higher uh, alpha here would be the, the, the IMAX premium. I mean, how much does having an IMAX auditorium in your theater increase uh, the, the revenue? And since we're in logs, uh, you know, it's going to be the percentage. We're going to interpret that as a percentage increase in revenue. So I've already talked about the, the why these, viral, uh, these hypotheses might be violated. So there's a what we call a hedonic channel. It's choice. And that's known in the literature as the, 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 the megaplex is, uh, is basically the hypothesis that consumer first choose the theater and one day the theater they choose a movie. That's a theater first, movie second. And uh, so some people like the theater, right? They like theaters and especially the theater is a lot of choice. So that's uh, hedonic channel, right? So the, what, what do people, how do they make the choice of when, when they go to the, watch a movie, do they choose first a theater or they choose uh, the, the, the or well, they first won the movie, right? Obviously, it's a bit of both, but uh, Elias Berg uh, called that the theater first, movie second choice. And, uh, and there's also the, uh, the movie viewing experience. And there's two papers here that shows that screen size depends on auditorium size. And so the, the larger the auditorium, the bigger the screen and, uh, and, and larger screen will give you better experience for the, um, at least for the average consumer. Uh, and then there's a scheduling channel that you can learn better about how to match uh, local tests and specific movie titles. And that's going to be an issue if uh, there are more and more titles to offer because the, 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 then the challenge is to, is to always have the, 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 the titles that, uh, so, so as supply of titles increase, you, 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 that would be a force toward the Megaplex as well. So another thing, sorry, there's a bit of a buildup. Uh, so, so another, another thing we're going to do in that paper, we're going to recognize that, that, that the, 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 the movie revenues is a function of ASIUP. So here, a little bit more notation. So A is in every auditorium. S is a capacity per auditorium. So that's total capacity of the theaters. And, and I is going to be the screening intensity. So an important dimension is going to be how frequently you, 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 you screen a, a title. So some, you could be open on, uh, in the morning, you could be open in the afternoon, you could be open at night, you could be open any days of the week. That's going to influence your screening intensity. So we, now we want to understand a little more the channel, the channel through which maybe the revenue is, is uh, designed, uh, depends on design. So first we're gonna show that we're gonna reject the theater design neutrality. And then we wanna understand the channel through which theater design matter. So it could matter through having uh, your theater showing more, more movies, or it could be through having uh, uh, more bums on seats. So you, you're scheduling a movie and you, are, you have more people, uh, you have a higher seat utilization rate. And you'll see the, the utilization rate is fairly low, right? It's around 20%, 30%. So, so having more bums on seats is a, is a way to get more money. And, but also scheduling more movie, holding constant bums on seats is another way to get more money. And the final channel is price, although there's a large literature that shows that price doesn't respond that much. So, if, so that's an identity, right? That's an identity. This is uh, something that should hold in the data. But once you know that this, this holds in the data, what you do is that you, you take elasticities and, and you get this, uh, you, you get this uh, for both uh, auditorium and seats, you know that the, elasticity, the revenue elasticity to auditorium minus one is equal to the elasticity of, of, uh, of uh, screen intensity, capacity utilization rate, and, 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 and price. So we know that if this goes up, if the if the revenue uh, is not linear, so this is not zero, the left-hand side is not zero, we know that it has to be the sum of what's on the right-hand side. And it allows us to see what, what makes, let's say, Megaplex more profitable from a revenue point of view. What, what makes Megaplex having higher revenues than, let's say, uh, Multiplex 
uh, it's going to be have to be either that they, they have a higher screening intensity or they have a higher utilization rate or a higher price, and we have this identity in terms of elasticity here. And same thing for the IMAX. So we will look at this decomposition. So the, let me jump in the data. So we, it's, uh, the data comes from end groups. It's a trade publication in China. It covers most of the theaters in China. Uh, we have quarterly observation. Where, where movie theaters are fairly close to one another. And um, so they, they face similar demand conditions. So we hold demand and competition constant. And then we see if uh, in different local markets, you have different composition of theaters. And we see if the composition of theaters in terms of theater design matters. So that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to compare a, a local market that has, if you remember the thought experiment before, that has five identical uh, theaters that all have the same number uh, of, of screens. As, sorry, it was, it was uh, 10 identical theaters that have the same number of screens. Does it earn the same revenue as another local market that has that is identical in all respect and that has, let's say, some theaters have many screens and some theaters have few screens? So, so what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, we're going to Create these local markets, and we're going to take basically uh, the the, the IMAX going to be the center of local market, and we're going to take uh, any theaters within three miles of that IMAX going to be what we're going to compare, right? That's going to be the the we're going to we kind of fix effects for this local market. Sometimes a theater enters, and that's when things we, we get this variation that over time there's been quite a bit of entry, and then we see what happened to the revenue of everybody, and um, so. This is, uh, we're going to have uh, 400 IMAX theaters, uh, 2,000 2, classic theaters, and the, the number of IMAX theaters and classic theaters vary, and there's also variation across local markets, and that's what we use to back up this, uh, this revenue function, the R function. So let's see here, I'm going to skip the descriptive statistics for the sake of time, but but you see that the, basically the average theaters has about, let, let me discuss a couple of things, has about seven, seven theaters, a thousand seats, projects, uh, 486 movies, I think it's per week, and has about 17 capacity utilization rate. So you see it's 17%, it's the average, and that's the price in uh, 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 Yuan. Um, and, and these are the last four are theater characteristic that are similar to what people have, have uh, looked in the literature. So we have the 3D characteristics which capture better audio and better screen. And we have VIP couple is better quality seats. And um, so we have similar theater characteristics. So let me, so, so these are the results, like it's pretty hard to read, but we, we have, um, everything is done uh, in figures. So the first figure here, what, what I'm plotting here is, um, so we do that linear and after we, so we reject the hypothesis linear and after we, we dig in a little bit and we take a nonlinear function. That's a nonlinear function. So that's basically the, the first point here is how much does a, a, a theater that has two screen, how much does it earn more to one that has one screen and that, that's basically a, a theaters with three screen, that's uh, the, the, the third screen, right? How much does it bring you additional? So, so basically, um, these are the, these, uh, the, the eta are A, right? It's the, the, the percentage change in revenue in, in a theaters as you add a screen. And, and you see as you add a screen and, and, and you normalize it to one. So, so if it would be zero, it means that the, that, that the revenue is linear in screen count. Scott, so, Scott so, if I may just yeah. shortly interrupt, there was a question from Stephen Shepard ah. in the chat related to, I think, the descriptive statistics table you showed. Do you have data on income levels in cities where the theaters are located? Population density, since you are using fixed mm -hmm. revenue markets around IMAX theaters. Thanks. So. So we, we, we have that, we have that, but in practice, we put, uh, we put a, a city fixed effect. So 
so so the income is going to be is going to pick up uh, is going to pick up trend in um, trend over time, right? There could be different trend in uh, how cities get uh, wealthier, and um, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we we can we can we can we, we have population and income, right? So so basically, cities become uh, some city grows and and so we're going to have that. Yeah, and after okay. Uh, so what we see right. here is that the, the, the hypothesis hold for for beyond uh, after let's say seven or the, the so seven would be the eighth theater. Uh, you already have that it's it's uh, not statistically different from zero. So the theater design neutrality holds for, for below it, it it makes a big difference to add auditorium right. If you add an auditorium holding total number of seats constant. So meaning that you take uh, the, the, the interpretation of that is that you take a theater of uh, uh, like a thousand seats. If you have uh, uh, three, if this theater has three auditorium uh, of like, let's say 330 seats versus two auditoria of 500 seats each, you're gonna earn more if you have more auditorium. So up to about nine. Um, so, so they're increasing return to adding auditorium that are declining up to the 10th auditorium, which uh, 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 after which that constant return. And then if I go uh, here, it's with seats. So I do the similar thing with seats. So here I have the log of, uh, of, of seat per screen. And, and here I have the log revenue. So, so you see the, the, um, we do different things. So, so the, 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 the dashed line is the linear approximation. The, the solid black line is a quadratic uh, uh, estimation. And, uh, and the, the solid uh, red curve is a nonlinear, uh, a completely nonlinear estimation. And what, what you get here is that the, um, the, the, the constant return to scale. Uh, so, so maybe it's better to plot um, to plot it this way. So, so here, here basically the next graph is the the derivative of the solid black curve. So we compute the derivative and then uh, we plot the derivative with confidence interval. So here the hypothesis would be that one would be this theater design neutrality. One would be that uh, uh, for one percent more seats, you get one percent more revenue. And what we get here is that it, it, you do have increasing returns, but it's not statistically different from one, right? But you see that the curve is slightly above one, and then it's it's one uh, um, uh, for so, so basically most theaters would be in that range. There would be uh, the, the log of seats would be around five, and then but what we get is that we get some significant decreasing returns for large theaters. So, so this very, very large, uh, sorry, for large auditoria. So, so uh, above, I think it's summarized in the previous, uh, uh, so, so in the previous result four, we summarized the results by looking at seat cons. So basically the constant return to adding seats up to 124 seats per auditorium, decreasing return from 124 to 400 seats and I could have a negative return beyond that level. N negative return is a bit puzzling, right? But uh, 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 so there could be a composition effect there. But from 124 to 400 seats, basically you, you get for, if you add 1% more seats, you get less than 1% more revenue. So, so we reject the theater design neutrality. And after what I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show now uh, 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 a lot, Lot more results. So what we could do here, we we uh, we group the theaters in in different uh, subsets. So we have the we have the quadruplex, multiplex, megaplex. So depending on the number of screens, and then after we have the palace, we have more than 124 seats per, per screen, and the mini hall that are less than 124. And then we estimate the the, the like a, a Cobb Douglas function within each subset, and to see how these uh, now we allow the, the relationship to not only be nonlinear, but also to be interaction, interaction between S and A, right? Because here we were plotting only uh, in these two results I showed you before, there was no interaction allowed. 
And in this interaction, what we get is, uh, so where is the result? Um, so what we get here is that, um, so if you look, it's a little difficult to read here, but basically if you look, for example, a palace with, with very few, uh, 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 with few auditoria, you would get a very large return. So basically uh, of increasing the number of uh, auditorium and um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, and, and the, the return to increasing number of seats would be negative, right? So that, that's why, so then this number would be very large, meaning that if you increase number of auditorium by 1%, you get, uh, I think here it's uh, the way to read that number. It's very large, right? It's like 200, uh, 239%. And if you add seats here, if you add 1% seats, you, you, you get 0.05%. So that's the idea. This, this, this palace with very few uh, uh, auditoria have way too many seats. And uh, so if you see at Megaplex, Megaplex you see here, uh, the, the 0.9 is, is we're close to one here. That's what you would expect. Uh, at the Megaplex, it doesn't make a big difference to add auditoria. Um, and the, the, the Megaplex that has more than 124 seats, still you would like to have fewer seats per, per auditorium. And uh, in the mini hall, however, uh, you, you see the mini hall means that you, you have less than 124 seats, then you would like to have more seats. So it seems that the sweet point is around, around nine, uh, and we're going to do that at the end of the paper. It's around nine, nine auditorium and uh, uh, 100 and something seats. So now I do the decomposition that I talked about. I, I want to understand. Uh, so, so I want to understand here uh, what is a channel? Uh, why are um, uh, why are um, why is the return in, in quadruplex to have more auditorium? Why do you have a large return to have more auditorium? Sorry. So, so here you're going to see that both for palace and mini hall, so whether you, you have large auditorium or small auditorium, adding an auditorium when you have few auditorium gives you a very large return because you are going to have a much higher occupancy rate. So that's why the, the, red, the red rectangle here explains the, 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 the large part. And then, and then also you're going to have more screening. So you see, you're going when, when to, you, when you add, uh, when you add uh, auditorium for, 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 for theaters with few auditorium, you increase screening intensity, which is not the case anymore if you already have more than four auditorium. Screening plays a little role. And actually, if you go to a megaplex, you can screen less. So you can have a negative effect in megaplex. So you see screening intensity as a, as a it depends on how many, it depends on, on how many screens you have, or how many auditorium you have. If you have few auditorium, you're gonna screen more. So you're meaning you're gonna get more, uh, 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 more, uh, how do you call that? Like um, uh, time, uh, time, uh, uh, you're going to be open more often during the day and more days of the week, and you're going to have more uh, time where you start a movie. Uh, however, what's driving the, the return to auditorium is really the, 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 the intensity, right? So, so, so you bring a larger crowd. If you are bigger theaters, you're going to get a higher occupancy rate. You're going to have more bums on seats. The, the red, the red uh, parts are always positive, and they are pretty significant. Price has a very little. Seat uh, utilization rate and uh, at, at, at low level of low count of auditorium, you also get to have increased your screening intensity. Now, if we do the same thing for, if we do the same thing for increasing the size of the auditorium, so it's about seating capacity. So, so seating capacity. Uh, so now we we want to distinguish the impact of seating capacity on on uh, on palace. So you mean palace? They already have lots of seats. They have more than 124 seats. Then basically uh, having more seats is bad. If you increase the number of seats by one percent, you, you get uh, a 
uh, half a percent increase in occupancy rate. And uh, that, that's why it's not a good idea. Um, however, if you have less than 124 seats, what, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna be able to have more, more, more screening. So um, what's, what's driving the, the, so what's driving, so, so you remember here we said it was concentrated to scale and, and that's why here, like for example, in quadruplex, it's the whole thing cancel out but you still have this effect. So you're gonna have a negative effect of occupancy rate, but a positive effect of, uh, you, you can have more screening. So there's a little, little effect here. Uh, now I'm gonna turn to, uh, I, I wanna say a couple more things. Um, I'm gonna turn to the IMAX premium. So, so we find a very large IMAX premium. So, so, so everything else constant, a theater with IMAX has a 45% revenue premium. And, and so you could say, okay, so here there's a bit of an unobserved, uh, unobserved characteristic problem. It could be that it could be that the IMAX theater also has better popcorns or better parking, or you know some amenities we can't observe. It, it's possible. So, it, or or it could be the fact that you, you go to the you go to the IMAX theaters because you have, you have this option option to watch the the IMAX feature film. And then you change your mind, and basically, once you're there, you, you switch to a non IMAX uh, title, right? It could be these two explanations, right? It could be unobserved, unobserved characteristics, or that, that the IMAX theaters, they're just nicer theaters, right? And more convenient theaters. And the 45% revenue premium is very, very massive, right? So, so we, we could make a little progress on that and say, well, so we don't have all, we don't have many many theater characters. We don't know how big is the the parking, how convenient, how good are the popcorns, and uh, um, how comfortable are the seats. We have a couple of of characteristics, but it could be that our max theaters are better on all these dimensions. But so so one progress we can make is to say, look, if it's if it's a, a crowd effect, like if it's the fact that people come to the IMAX theater because they have the option to watch an IMAX movie, and after this they switch. Uh, you should get the you should get the prediction that the IMAX premium is larger when there are more IMAX movie released, right? And uh, which we find that so so, so you see we, we do a, a you know like a differential effect, and uh, we see that the, we find that the IMAX premium increases more when more IMAX movie are released relative to regular ones. So you see here, there's really a spillover effect. It's, it's not some, because here it's, we hold the theater constant. So it's not that the, 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 the IMAX theaters are as better characteristics that we don't observe because we hold theater constant and we say when that holding the theater constant, if you release more IMAX movie, you have a spillover effect on non IMAX revenues. So, which means that uh, somehow the IMAX has this, uh, part of the 45% is this, uh, uh, being able to draw bigger crowds. And um, we also decompose the IMAX premium and we find that the, the IMAX premium, basically the, the theaters with IMAX have a much higher capacity utilization rate. And they also have slightly higher ticket price. There's no effect in terms of, of screening intensity. They don't screen more uh, titles per auditorium. So the IMAX premium is really the, the ability to uh, uh, fill your 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 auditorium with more bums on seats. Um, so I probably have two more. And how are we doing on time, Andres? It is okay. Uh, let's say about five minutes. Will this be okay or even ten? It's no problem. There is just one additional question again by ah. Stephen Stephen Shepard. What is the premium in ticket price charged by the theaters for an IMAX showing? So um, we you remember we 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 never we never look at um, we never look at the um, at the um, IMAX revenue or IMAX prices. So we, we only look at uh, regular revenue and regular ticket price. And so the the premium, um, so I don't think I, so it would be, so it's not here. Uh, so the decomposition, I think, I think if your question is, if your question is, um, 
how much do the IMAX theaters charge more on their regular tickets? Uh, that number is, um, I'm looking on a different screen now to try to retrieve that number. Stephen, if you wish, you can also unmute this shortly. So the 44%, yeah. yeah. I was just curious as, as to how different the prices were. That's right. So, so the price, the, the price is 12% uh, higher. So we find that when we do the decomposition is uh, the, the 44% uh, re revenue premium on the IMAX theaters is explained by uh, a 12% higher ticket price for, for regular features film and a uh, 26% increase in um, uh, uh, capacity utilization. So, thank you. Um, so, um, so one more thing I, I want to say, and, and that's a complex point, but an important point. So, so all the regressions we did is, um, if you look at our regression, it's, it's, it's a technical point, but it's an important point. So, so, so what, what, what people had done in the literature is, is that they had looked at this kind of local agglomeration with uh, uh, the idea of business stealing versus uh, uh, how much you expand the market, market expansion effect. And what we do is slightly different because what, what we do is that we look at uh, within the market we're not looking at what happened when, uh, uh, when there is entry. We're really comparing markets that have a different combination of design, right? And, and you could say that across some markets, you know, if, if you're looking at two markets that, that, that uh, uh, if you think about data, right, you have, you have two markets and then they, they may have different uh, combination of theaters and then entry might take place in one market and maybe exit takes place in another market and that's the variation we use. And when entry and exit takes place, then you have a different combination of theaters. When that happens, you could say, well, there are two effects really, right? They're, they're, one effect is that you, the, 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 the set of uh, theater design change, but there's also a market effect, right? And what, what we argue here and what we demonstrate in that, uh, in, in that what we call the total effect is that in, 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 in our, we're not saying that the competitive effect, the, the fact that you take one theater in or out of the market as, as is not important. What, what, what we're saying is that the, this effect is, is small relative to, relative to at the theater level, relative to the theater effect. So, so basically if for a given theater, what happened is that theater, let's say that never happens, but as a thought experiment, let's say that theater adds an auditorium, which is, the real thought experiment that you look at the, the same design in two different markets, one, one market is having one more auditorium in one of its theaters. So, so, so the, the effect of adding that auditorium on, on that theater is gonna be the driving force. Now, adding that auditorium also gonna have an effect through the fact that you have increased the total capacity in the market. So what we show is that um, adding capacity in the market in the market as a negligible effect compared to the compared to the uh, to your own effect of having a different design yourself and and this is consistent with the fact that for the total market there there is uh, actually a significant effect of of entry and that's because then you are multiplying by the total number of theaters in the market and all, our markets have actually qu quite a few theaters and so so, so, so when, when, a, when a theater, be, when you compare two markets where one market has, has, has slightly bigger theaters, that second market with slightly bigger theaters is gonna have a more capacity. And um, so this is gonna have a big impact for, for the market as a whole. But, but if you look at the marginal effect of having more capacity on each theater, it's fairly small. And the driving effect is really the effect of your own effect of you, you are a theater and you have either more seats or more capacity. So what we, what we show here is that the competitive effect at, when you look theater by theater is negligible. When you sum it up across all the theater of the market, you are back to the Davis result that you do have a, a significant competitive effect for the entire market. But marginal, if you look at the individual theater, 
adding um, adding a, 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 an auditorium to your theater, the driving force is the impact on your own revenue. And then there's a small effect of, of increasing market capacity. So that's a bit this technical point that we, 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 we were a little more careful uh, in the, there to, 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 to show that the, 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 the competitive effect of changing design is fairly small. And then we do uh, some, some uh, we, we write a very simple uh, uh, optimization problem where we say, look, there's a cost of opening a theater, there's a cost of, of adding an auditorium, and there's a cost of adding a seat per auditorium. And then we, we do the, derive the first of the condition and we, we, this allows us to do some, some, to derive some prediction. And we find that the majority of theaters have too few auditorium and too many seats per auditorium. So too few auditoria is because you, you see the, the, the majority of theaters, they have, uh, the, the auditorium elasticity story is, uh, is greater than, than one. And so it, the, the, the theory predicts that it should be less than one. The, the theater should never land on a, on a number of auditoria that such that the elasticity of uh, having an additional auditorium on, on revenue should be more than one. And we find that the, the vast majority only basically the megaplex, right? For the megaplex, you see it's, it's, uh, it's closer to one. Um, so only the megaplex have uh, the, the right number of auditorium. All the other theaters should basically take their auditorium, split them in half or something along these lines, right? Have, uh, take the same capacity and have more, or, more auditorium, auditoria that, but smaller ones. Regarding, regarding seat count, we, what, we, what we find is that we do a slightly different, uh, we, we use the optimization problem in a slightly different way. And we, the idea is to say uh, how, how, if you think of this thought experiment of taking the palace and splitting it into smaller auditoria, um, what cost would you require to not do that? Because we know that the palace earn much, much less revenue than, than smaller venues. And so the only reason you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a palace and split it into smaller auditoria is because there is a very large cost. And we find that the cost you require to, to rationalize the pass is too high. And that's how we, 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 we use this first order condition to conclude that the, the majority of theaters have too few auditoria and too many seats per auditorium. And looking at the, the derived uh, elasticities for, for these various designs. And then, and then we look at, um, we look at um, what has happened over time. And so, so what we know, our, our sample, okay, so, so the, the, taking a bit of a uh, stepping back, uh, investing in a theater design is irreversible, irreversible investment. It's, it's uh, in, in our sample, we never find uh, a, a theater in the same location that has changed its design. Meaning if you take a, a given uh, uh, location, you, you always gonna have the same number of auditoria and the same number of, of, of seats. So it means that it's irreversible. Um, so maybe you could argue that the theaters in our sample, they, they were built way back when, where possibly the number of titles was different and this hypothesis of theater first, movie second was less relevant, right? Choice was less important. So maybe the, the, if that's the case, it means still theater uh, owners, they should realize that currently uh, you know, if you take the, the, the revenue function from 2012 to 2016, you know, you should, the sweet point would be like nine auditorium and about 120 uh, seats per auditorium. So if that's the case, we should see that the, the theaters built uh, recently have more auditorium and fewer seats. And, and that's what we do here. We, we take longer time series uh, on, on theater, theater size from 2000 to 2016, so 14 years of data. And we, and we see that the number of auditorium went up quite a bit actually from uh, a bit above six to, to closer to eight, right? So probably one more auditoria per, per theater. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, you might say it's not that much, but still in percentage point, it's, 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 uh, it's changed. There's a lot of variability, however, right? There's a lot of variability in this uh, trend. 
if you look at the ceiling capacity is more pronounced, the ceiling capacity is on the right. So, so in 2016, the new theater built are much smaller than the theaters built in 2002. And so this is consistent with the idea of inertia, of trend in the optimal design and kind of market response that is consistent with the estimates that we get from the, from the uh, revenue elasticities. So let me uh, take a question from Jen. Uh, so thank you. It, um, that's correct, yes. Um, I see. So, so the issue is uh, consumer preference for more choice. And um, any thought about how COVID might change preferences? Uh, interesting. Uh, so, so, so to, to answer the first part of the question, I think I probably can say a little more about that than the second part, but the first part of the question, so we don't have a final answer because we have these uh, three, uh, we have, a, you know, the three uh, conflicting hypotheses, right? One is choice, the other one is experience. So the prediction and experience is a bit ambiguous, right? If you have uh, more uh, auditoria that's smaller, um, the screen is going to be smaller. So some, some, some consumers clearly will have a worse experience, but, but it's about the average consumer. So even the screen size, is not entirely clear. Uh, it depends how you price your tickets. And because on a very, very large screen in the palace, if you're way in the back, maybe you would rather have been in a smaller auditorium uh, uh, than it would matter less to be in the back. So the, so, so the, the, the issue of... Uh, the impact of screen size on average ticket price. And, and then things can depend on about how you price your tickets, right? Do you, do you have a, a general admission, everybody pays the same price and then you look for your seat or, or do, you, uh, do you price differently different seats, right? So putting that aside, uh, the, uh, the, another force that is hard also that, that is also uh, has to be take, taken into account is scheduling. I think scheduling, they, there's a large literature on scheduling and, and having more auditorium uh, allow the theaters to better learn about demand. And especially in China, it seems China is a bit ahead of the US. They churn these movies uh, much faster. So they don't have these long-term contracts and uh, with, um, with distributors. And they are constantly experimenting with movie titles. And, uh, and, and sometimes some movie, for, for whatever reason, in the local market might do very well. And then you have to you have, you benefit from showing that movie more frequently. And it seems that's what these theaters do, right? They, they, having more auditoria allows you more flexibility in learning, more experimentation. And I haven't seen any papers that explain that very clearly, but it's, it's my intuitive sense, right? That the, you're in the local market, you don't know what are, are the movies that you should show, feature. And so you try movies, right? And, and, and then they're always competing. You always have like a stock of movies and you have uh, movies you're retiring, new movies you could introduce. And you're constantly playing with that. If you have more auditoria, it sounds to me that, that you can better exploit this random shock in demand that, that are very temporary, a bit like fast fashion. I mean, that's, that's my view of... Uh, fast fashion, right? Is that you, you learn a lot about this local demand, like Sarah is always changing what they put in every single store, right? And uh, they're, 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 when you read about it, they explain that you have this very small temporary tr fashion trend in Stockholm versus Shanghai. And, uh, and you, you have to be very flexible. And, and I see these movie theaters, possibly is a bit of that going on. So, so there might be a scheduling channel that we, we can, we, the only thing we can say about that is looking at screening intensity. And we see there's a response. The second part of your question is uh, how COVID might change uh, a preference. Um, for, for, I think these preferences are largely, uh, largely driven by the number of titles and uh, whether how different theaters pr provide more diversity once you arrive there. And COVID, I'm not sure how COVID would change uh, these things. But yeah, thank you for the question. So, so to conclude, we strongly reject the hypothesis of theater design neutrality. Um, we find increasing return to revenue to adding auditoria up to nine auditoria, seat up to an intimate capacity of about 120 seats. 
and after you have decreasing return and the palace not doing very well and a significant revenue premium to having an IMAX auditorium, part of it is not due to unobserved characteristics, part of it is due to uh, uh, spillover. And this deviation from theater design neutrality explained by different capacity utilization rates, screening intensity, and to some extent, ticket price. Uh, that concludes uh, uh, my talk, and I want to thank you. Thank you, thanks a lot, uh, Pascal. And thank you a lot for coming. Uh, we may discuss later, but thanks for being here and for an excellent lecture. Uh, I open the floor naturally to questions. There were quite some already to talk. Jen, please. All right, thanks. Thanks very much for that, um, that great paper. Uh, I'm sorry I sprung the sort of COVID question on you there in the middle of your presentation. I was more sort of thinking of it as a something to talk about in the end. Um, the reason I put it there is that the the rejection of the hypothesis of, hypothesis of theater design neutrality um, seems to sort of support the consumer theory about experience, as you were saying, right? So it's, it's not only the film, it's the whole experience of the, of the event. Um, and sort of we've, we've seen some changes in sort of post COVID, if I can say that uh, era, where um, people valuing the experience of going out and the sort of social aspect of things even more. Um, but at the same time, they're quite hesitant about very large indoor gatherings, right? So um, as I was thinking about your findings, I was saying, well, yes, I would actually expend, expect these trends to speed up, right? That, that it's, it's an experiential good as much as being about the film. Um, and also that there might be some hesitancy of going to these gigantic palaces where you're going to be in the same room as many, many other people. Um, so that's just to explain, you know, where my thinking was going and maybe if you've got sort of other thoughts around that. Thank you. No, oh, thanks, Jen, yeah. Yeah, it would definitely be something to, uh, it would be something you could look at in the data, right? To look at what, what uh, with, uh, if your variation in, uh, so that's what people are doing, right? They're looking at the, different uh, incidents of COVID in different region. And uh, uh, there are all kinds of measure of that and to see if uh, this influenced the demand, uh, the, the, the revenue, the attendance for different theaters and some design would do like more. I think if I hear you well, it's, uh, it's reasonable, right? That uh, uh, theaters that have more certain features would, would, would do better. And, and uh, even to pursue, in China, it seems something that is popular is called couple seats. So somehow you have this kind of uh, very intimate seats that are pretty, uh, pretty um, um, more, more private, right? So, so theaters that offer these features or theaters that offer more intimate uh, uh, viewing, right? They, 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 they would uh, be, uh, they may have, uh, yeah, they may do better. So that would be something uh, worth investigating, right? Whether privacy or uh, more um, like having more this uh, uh, seating features and also seating capacity could influence uh, attendance. Jen, thanks for the chat. Any further question? Jen, I'm just asking to lower the hand. Maybe two, yeah, question, uh, two questions from my side. I hope you're still not short on time. Uh, firstly, you mentioned the 
semi-parametric, um, as the, I think, final um, non-linear function that you used in the regressions. What kind was it? I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't remember to be able to see it. And also, do you expect that by changing this additionally, it is this F part of the initial equation, you would get some different results. And the second one more, I would say, broad one, um, it is related to your findings to Chinese theaters. How much do you expect these um, findings would change for any other I would say culture context even. Would you expect similar results in UK, USA, in Canada, in Europe? Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Andrej. Um, so for, for the non-parametric, we use, um, uh, so we tried, so, so what we use, we use Robinson double residual semi-parametric regression estimator. So, so it's, it's essentially smooth the, um, it is trying to find the. So what was that? Um, um, yeah. So that's answer your first question, and and we tried. I mean, we we were your our goal there was mostly for stability. So as you see on the right hand side, if you go for very large theaters, we were struggling with. They have much fewer observation and some funny things happen. So you, you can see definitely uh, this decreasing part was a bit uh, a pain in the, a pain, right? Because I mean, it's hard to think of any any uh, uh, reasonable hypothesis under which the revenue would be decreasing. So so it's either some kind of unobserved characteristics. These theaters in that range, maybe they are larger right but but they also um there's also something about these theaters that they have lower revenue and 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 but but this yeah this range was also essentially there are much fewer observations here and things were more unstable and possibly there's more heterogeneity in these theaters so that that was uh that was a bit the struggle and and then the majority of the theaters are, are, are below five and a half. Uh, and then you have these 20% or 10 or 50, I, I don't recall exactly, but it's not, it's a small fraction of theaters that, that give us big trouble. And uh, the, yes, yeah, so, so doing that elsewhere. So, so what, what we had, uh, the, the, the beauty of China is that the, the it, it's, it's, um, the market has really uh, uh, the, the 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 entry has been enormous and growth has been enormous and you have a lot of diversity of theaters and uh, that's the the variation we use right so we have this uh, we have we have four years of data and we the in this uh, in, in in each local market you have changes in the number of theaters and so you have a lot of um, uh, 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 panel aspect is, is gives us a lot of uh, powerful identification and I, I don't think uh, because we have this variation can kind of hold constant in market and we see uh, the, the, the number and the type of design changing right and then after all we got to, to make sure is that we we hold um, the growth constant and then we just like differentiating just the design so we have one neighborhood where this type of theaters enter and another neighborhood where that type of theater enters um, so in the US, I, I don't know you would have, uh, 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 you see, you want to do that over a short period. So, so, so you, you could argue that the, I mean, yeah, you want, you want to argue that the, 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 the there's massive entry because, um, you know, the, 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 the suddenly, you know, that you don't have enough theaters and the, the, there's a backup of, uh, supply. It's tricky, right? It's always tricky to know, uh, you know, when entry takes place, uh, do you really hold demand constant, right? And uh, so, so uh, and why there's more entry in that city or why there's entry of that type in that city and not entry of this type. So when, when, when you do this panel identification, it's always tricky, right? To, to, you are really identifying, uh, uh, you, you're hoping that there's a common, some kind of common trend and entry in that, that, that the reason you, you have different entry with different theater design in different cities 
is either because of mistakes, right? So it's just classic supply side. You hope there are mistakes and that's what you identify off or because uh, there are constraints, right? Some kind of regulation, you're opening a shopping mall and uh, you, you cannot build large palaces. So, and, and then the, the, if you dig in for the identity, what really allows you to identify these functions, you need something like that, right? Something, some constraint. Uh, otherwise you're back into that uh, uh, typical econometric curse that you can always have some unobserved unobserved characteristics that explain these, uh, the variation in design and then what are you identifying with? Okay, thanks a lot. I'll just shortly add to this curve, could maybe quantile regression type could be helpful. It's just a uh, Yes, yes, uh, a quantile, yes. Um, so, Yeah, we didn't try quantile regression. So you try to. Uh, uh, um, it's number metric. Same. So here. Yeah, I would have to think about it. No, thanks. Thanks for bringing that okay. up. Great. Thanks. What, what more we could get? Thanks. Great. For the questions, the audience. If not, I think that Pascal, you also need to run for the students and so on. Thanks a lot again for the presentation and for coming for excellent presentation. Thank you also to the participants for your questions and for being here. We continue um, in two weeks time, I think with a smaller symposium on younger researchers. So thank you again. And I hope, uh, yeah, everything, nevertheless fitted. Well, thank you, the video was recorded and it will be online in about a day. Marie was also here, she just left. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot to all again. Well, thanks again for your questions and uh, for attending the seminar. Thanks, thanks for coming, yeah, presentation. And thank, thank you, you. Andres, for Bye -bye. organizing. Thanks. Bye. Bye.